This is the art of start-up war. And my name is Brian McMahon, your host and sensei. Here is what we know. 98% of startups will fail every single day. And mostly due to reasons outside your control. The Expert Dojo Startup Accelerator, we look to even up the playing field by sitting down with the greatest minds in startup investment right here in our studio in Silicon Beach, where we look to shine a light on your path to success. Now, our guests each week have invested millions of dollars into startups and are the most respected investors in the world. Now, they share all they know with you, the listener. So join us on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, starting off your week winning the war against startup failure. Welcome back. It is another Tuesday morning. It is 10 o'clock. You are at the Expert Dojo podcast, which is for one thing and one thing only, and that is to help you entrepreneurs get a better idea about what investors are thinking when they're looking at your business. So we are back again. I have the wonderful Mr. Mike Krebs here. He is one of the Pasadena Angels, an extremely well-respected angel group here in Los Angeles. Welcome, Mike. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, Brian. It's good, 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 good to have you online because I love having Pasadena Angels here. Um, and I know you've only been there for a year or so. So this is actually, this is a great one because... When looking at angel investing into early stage startups, there's such a broad spectrum of people who invest that it's great for our listeners to be able to hear an angel who just started a year or so ago and how you are navigating the waters of angel investing and what you've learned in that short period of time. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, I am still learning. I have I have a lot more, I think, to, yet to learn, but... The way to, to I find the, the way to get involved in angel investing is just dive in and start start doing it. And what I hadn't known until the Pasadena Angels uh, was that there are actually organizations out there. There are angel groups. I had heard of angel investors, and these are people who had supported, uh, you know, as a high net worth individual, some entrepreneurs and whatnot. But it was news to me, actually, to be honest with you, that there's actually these groups that get together that pool their money, but more importantly, pool their brains to help, uh, you know, I guide and, and advise with the entrepreneurs that come through the doors. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I sometimes wonder how individual angels who start investing in early stage startups even do it. Like, it's so hard. You think about it, you come from a space, maybe you've worked in a, as a business person for years and years and years, and then some person comes up to you. I won't even say kid, because these days entrepreneurs are, many of them are 65 or are as 22. But an entrepreneur comes up to you and that person says, I have this great idea. We're going to change the world. We're going to do new. But how do you know if they're really going to do it, if it's just you and your own? You can easily get carried exactly. away with emotion. Uh, uh, that's so true. Because, you know, you hear, everybody hears every now and again some great ideas or something that, a technology that sounds Maybe too good to be true, yeah. but how do you evaluate that by yourself? You, you just you just can't. You can't have the breadth to to know everything from biotechnology to to uh, computer technology to anything else. It, it is something that you you get from this group of angels that work together, and it's it's a it's a very it's a big, broad, diverse group of of intellects too. It's just about everything that. That, that comes through the doors, we have someone that has some familiarity with it. I love it. So as a Pasadena angel, how does the process work for a startup coming through? Do they apply? And then how does that application process work? And then you as one of the angels in the group, when do you first start seeing the startups? Well, okay, good question. The We work kind of on a monthly cadence at the Pasadena Angels, which means uh, for a month we are collecting res resumes, pitch decks, uh, what have you, from, from entrepreneurs making the application. And then once we've collected those, we go we go into the actual review process. And that, that works pretty simply. We look at, there, there's a kind of an investment director that looks at all of the applications, and some of them are just are just not very good. We, we get maybe 50 to 60 a month. Right. And uh, What does not very good mean? Because this is valuable. Because I think everybody when they're, so actually, 
I was going to say everybody, when they do their application, they try their best. But I've realized that's actually not true. Many people just go through a process, right? They'll fill out 20 applications for 20 places, but they won't think specifically about what that organization really likes in good return startups. Is, is what you call a bad application, is it one that's not thought through or just bad fit for Pasadena Angels? I, I'm talking, or all of the above? I'm talking mainly, it, 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 it's just not uh, well thought out. You know, you get so even even those people are applying to you for oftentimes uh, upwards of a million dollars yeah it's amazing how little effort they seem to have put into the pitch deck they they seem to there in some cases there's an assumption that what i have is so valuable i have such a much better mousetrap that of course you're going to want to to probe me and find out more about it and some of the some of it you have your your basic uh typos and things like that that are just uh, very careless that, that leads you to believe if, if they can't even correct the typos in a pitch deck, uh, how, how you know, careful are they going to be with the business? With your million dollars. That's right. a phenomenal point. You know, it's not so hard to put your pitch deck through Grammarly or to get somebody to check it or make sure it's okay. Do you have a preferred, I'm kind of asking you a question I know the answer to, but I think it's going to be very valuable for entrepreneurs. Do you have a preferred pitch deck format that you like entrepreneurs to use? Well, I, I would say it's got to be, on a macro level, it's got to be very clean and simple. Don't try to do too much and, and not too much writing. It needs to have a lot of white space in it. So you're just concentrating on the main points. That's, Excellent. At a big, big picture, uh, that's kind of what to do. As it goes through, uh, the elements you've got to do is you've got to describe your your product, what it is that that you're bringing to us. You got to des- describe your team who, and, the, who, and the problem that that product is solving. Exactly, right? you know, it, it, there's got to be a need for it, and 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 your your competition is not noticing something, or you're going to be a better mousetrap for whatever reason. Uh, and then the team, the marketing, and of course the financials are, are very big. It's uh, uh, you, you know are, are you are you well enough capitalized? Is, are you within your burn rate? Or how much runway do you have? Is that going to be adequate? Uh, what are your plans going forward? What is the plans to raise perhaps a Series A, B, C, that type of thing? How are you going to scale this business? Very interesting. I had a, a philosophy, and I, I'm an old school guy. Right? I've lived in many, many countries. I've had a bunch of companies on my own. But I, I believe in hard work. I believe that you have to have good business fundamentals. But I also believe, actually, that has hasn't really changed over the years. Over the last 20 or 30 years, give or take companies that just have so much money pumped into them that maybe they can bypass these rules, the vast majority of companies have got to be focused on, on the ideology that, sure, you can think like a startup, but you have to act like a corporation. If you're going to take a million dollars from an organization, you sure as heck better be approaching that whole process on the basis that they trust that you will be a corporation the day you take that money and acting as such. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and with the Pasadena Angels, if we're going to be investing that kind of money, we expect to have some visibility to the board of directors. If it isn't an actual board seat, uh, some kind of uh, board visibility that allows us to make sure that things are, are, are as you say, it's proceeding in a corporate manner, that the, that the objectives are being, are, are being crafted in a, in a proper way and that they're being pursued aggressively and with, uh, you know, with, with comprehension. And I'm going to give a shout out for Pasadena. I want to, I mean, we're not going to move away from the requirements within the application because I think it's so important for startups and it's a mistake which is made way too often and, and it's such a basic rookie mistake. You think about all the reasons why you are not going to get money because of problems in the economy, changes and everything else. But imagine not getting it just because you put forward a terrible application. Like, just shame on us for doing that. So I want to help you fix that. Um, But I also do want to really talk about why it's important to have a, a group like Pasadena Angels in your court. 
So Mike is talking about, well, they're going to look for a board seat. You should want them to have a board seat because unlike a venture capitalist where you have possibly one partner who's working with you and you'll never really see that partner because they have so many companies within the organization. Think about Pasadena Angels. Like how many angels are there in Pasadena Angels? Uh, I think there's about 130. So this is like, this is one-on-one Braveheart. You have your own militia army of angels who all have a vested interest in you being successful. Like, if you're not successful, then it sucks for Pasadena Angels as much as it sucks for you. They're only making an investment or so every single month. So it hurts if it's not being successful. And those angels are coming from backgrounds of leaders of industry, leaders of business, leaders of venture capital firms, institutional investors, service providers. Like, literally, if you can capture the power that you have within the group of angels, you can increase the success rates of your business by a phenomenal amount. Right. If you come and and you are are lacking in any of the skill sets that you need, there's going to be people there at the angels that have those skill sets. And that's so many of them are eager to share that with you and to work with you. And it's it's not you know meant for a, a job in terms of getting paid for it, but it is just a mentorship that, 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 we enjoy that. That's uh, like you say. A lot of these people have come from very big roles in business, and they're they're looking to to be able to share the what they've learned and what they've done. So I will say to you, as a startup, especially if you're past the accelerator stage or that very very early stage stage, and you have the choice between venture capitalist, individual angel, or angel group. You should always, always, always choose the angel group, unless the unless there's a strategic alliance with somebody who's actually going to directly help your business grow, because the group itself is such a powerful ally behind you. What else on the application form, Mike? So the deck, I get. Don't be stupid. Keep it simple. Mm. Have a high proportion of pictures, stimuli, not have like millions of words written down right. that nobody can ever make through or it's too hard to understand. But is there, are there other aspects that people can work on? for it to stand out amongst the other 50 a month? Well, obviously the the quality of your graphics and all that is very important. But but really what it comes down to is each point you're trying to make needs to be needs to be concise. For instance, if if you've got a marketing plan, put it on a page and you know and and go ahead and explain it and and the pitch the the deck itself is just part of it. The actual pitch of the pitch deck I think is almost equally important but uh, you just you just need to make sure that if you're doing marketing if you're doing finance you know for instance in finance what are you asking for a lot of times I, I've been in pitches where we have to ask so so what what is the ask you know that kind of thing but uh, just make sure that everything is is simply tightened up and and I don't think a pitch deck needs to be any more than 12 pages yeah. I like that you've said that. I have seen pitch decks of a lot more than 12 pages. Right, right. A lot, a lot more. Because the, the hard thing for an entrepreneur is they think, we have so much to say. Are you crazy? Like we're recreating the world. Right. And they have to put it. But what they don't realize is that the interest of people looking at, firstly, the people reading the pitch deck are not as enthralled by <laughs> one startup as obviously that individual startup is. And number two is our interest level decreases after a very short period of time. You maybe have a window of two or three minutes with less, 30 seconds with yes. someone before they decided, is this going to be something amazing or is it not? That is that is the that I think is more true and more important than just about anything. In fact, I just came this morning from a uh, where at the Pasadena Angels where we're going through the process where we're down to about ten companies. We've got rid of the the uh, the, the the non-performers that that applied, and now we have a Zoom conference with each. Everybody has a four-minute pitch, and, and these it, are the tens. So this generally this goes from 10. fifty gets culled down to ten right. with no pitches, right? That's just right. Looking at their decks. That's right. That's okay. right. Okay, and then we have the ten that are in there, and they're good. They get they get a, a three minute Zoom presentation, uh-huh. a four minute Zoom presentation, three minute Q and A, and then we have an internal Q and A for those ten. And the purpose there is to be getting down to four, so we're looking to to, wow. to, to get us down to to four in those in those uh, in those uh, uh, from those ten. But what you said is is very important in that uh, the. Uh, You've got you've got three minutes, four minutes. 
tell us what it is you're going to what what, you, what it is in the first thirty seconds. Tell us what your better mousetrap is, because as you say, we've got ten companies that we're going through like this, and it's 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 very easy to quickly make a decision that I don't think this is for me. I'll just go in and, you know, check my, my email, do a few other things. But uh, that decision is made often very quickly. And it's, and, and, and if you're and if your presentation is one that's confused, it's, it's over. You're, you're going to lose half of the angels that are, that, that are listening just, just, just because they can't follow it. And how focused, if we look at maybe the four or five areas that, are important. I mean, within a pitch deck, those 12 slides obviously all have different areas which are all important. The competition is important. The uh, team is important. The revenue is important. The future profitability, the ask and what it's going to be used for is important. The problem is important. The solution is important. Like all of the, and the market size is important. They're all important. But if you were going to weigh up Mm -hmm. the two or three most important slides that you just find that the angel's eyes start opening up, what do they look like? Well, uh, one slide that everybody pays attention to is the the team slide. Who who wow, is okay. who is the CEO? And and a little background: what's the education? What have they done in the past? Have there been uh, previous startups, successful exits, that kind of thing? Uh, that everybody is is very interested in. There's also, I would say. I would say probably uh, half of the angels come from a very uh, sophisticated financial background. So you better have your financial ducks in a row in terms of how are you going to, how much you're going to raise, how are you going to raise it, and uh, uh, what are you going to do with it? And, yeah. and, and then what is the cash flow? And they need to prove to you, because a lot of the time we see cash flow projections, which are crazy, right? right. They'll just say, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a million dollars next year, we're going to do $5 million the following year, we're then going to do $50 million by 2020 and then sell the business for $220 million by acquisition. Right. It's like, that's beautiful. Like, I love Alice in Wonderland as well. Right. But yet they have to show you, right? And I think for me, this is the biggest thing with Pasadena Angels is that 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 whole adage that I mentioned earlier on, which is think like a startup but act like a corporation, is so true. Like, they have to be able to convince all of those financially aware people who are listening right. that what they're going to do is achievable and it's believable, right? Right, right. And, 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 and uh, it's... How are you going to do it is, is the question. And it's all, it's all the pieces that go together, but the finance is very easy to, 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 to break apart because it's, you have the product, it's, it's coming new in first quarter 19, it's going to you know, generate this much revenue, et cetera, et cetera. However, if you're coming to the Pasadena Angels and you don't have any revenue, no one's going to really believe your future projections. It's 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 that's it's that simple. If you have a business, the the kind of business financially that's going to succeed as far as getting financing from Pasadena Angels is going to be something that uh, is already started and has some revenue coming in, and in and obviously looks like it can be scalable. Yeah. So, firstly, to have a great chance of making it through, and I mean great, 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 have revenue lined up, and then have a very simple line to more to better revenue which is coming through in the future that people can believe and right. um, what I also just seeing some of our companies go through from the dojo as well is it's always interesting to me to see some companies which are pre-revenue but they have a great product and platform and and I believe that in many of those cases either it's because the team is exceptional and maybe once in a, in a while there's an exception being made. But probably more realistic than that is that the Pasadena Angels are looking at the companies that they really like and they're saying, look, possibly it's going to be hard for this one to get through right now, but we want to see it because if they do what they say they're going to do, right. mm-hmm. then we want to relook at this in three, four, five months' time and already know the people who are here. And if they say they're going to do something and then they do it, their chances of raising investment in six months' time is extremely high. Absolutely, could be of these ten uh, companies that are going to be going through today. I would say probably well, we're going to have four go to the next round. And by the way, at the next round, the entrepreneurs will actually come in and in person, and then do a about a fifteen minute pitch, a ten minute Q and A, uh, to narrow it down to two. Uh, so the the uh, entrepreneurs today. Uh, to your point, uh, probably two or three of them were were uh, dismissed 
perhaps. Uh, I, I didn't stay the entire time. But uh, like you say, if they don't, they go into the monitor file, which is, is, is important because it means that we're going to keep an eye on you. But it's keep in mind, too, it's your responsibility then as the entrepreneur to keep you know, rattling the cage at Pasadena Angels, which whoever you've you know, uh, communicated with there, when you think you're ready to come back again. And I've seen it, I've seen it happen as, as often as, as quick as four months, where somebody now has got revenue or they've opened a new area of the business, and now they're going to come back and have a second look. And this brings up a really important point. Uh, I get a lot, we, uh, through the dojo here, we probably see, I don't know, six, 700 companies a year. So we see a lot of companies coming through. Now, many of those companies will come through with realistic expectations of how easy or hard it is to get investment. But some will come through saying, I've spoken to so-and-so who says we can get investment in 30 days or 45 days, and it's just not realistic. Look, if you've exited a company before, or a couple of companies, if you have a bunch of money that you've put in, if you have a rock star team of great people where it's a no-brainer, and if you went to a really nice school, yes, you probably will raise money very quickly. But that is not the majority of entrepreneurs. The majority of entrepreneurs, you got to be prepared for a 9-12 month um, campaign. And you may get it in three months, like it may happen, but you have to be prepared for 9-12 to 12 months. It's like, it's like saying, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find this beautiful, incredible, awesome, with a great personality, this partner who's going to be perfect for me for the rest of my life, and I'm allocating 30 days to find the person. Right. God bless you, yep. you know? It's just hard. <laughs> so many of the so many of the entrepreneurs we see are are uh, ready to you know ready to go, but they don't have uh, they don't have their their plans completely ready to go, and they're just they're ahead of themselves with yeah. this, and that just it, it it's it's disturbing. But you know if they can get in with an accelerator or if they can even get in with an angel group, there's a lot of opportunity to help them. So it's a path, right? Every meeting you have is just another paved stone in your path. And you have to have meetings. When we do the second series, we're, we're going to interview entrepreneurs because I want to give you that side of it as well and what they go through to meet with investors, to go from space to space to space. Every single meeting you have with any investor is not to get investment. It's for you to, f to become a little bit closer to the truth. And the truth is about how do I get to a place where we have the highest degree of certainty from both the investor and from my perspective that we're going to be successful. And between now and then, we want to make sure that we eradicate all of the fat, the things that are not actually going to get us to that place. So I, I, that's what I really like about Pasadena Angels. It's not an emotional conversation of you should invest in me because we have a great company and I'm really great and we're going to change the future. It's about a lot of very sensible people who've had many, many years in business who are looking at an individual entrepreneur and saying, what is your probability for success based in main part on the product fit that you have, the value you can bring out and the financial implementation that you've already achieved stroke will achieve right and and if you've if you've gone ahead and and uh you've made the uh deck and you're getting your financing what well, so many of the entrepreneurs will tell me that financing is really it's almost a stop in what they're doing in in terms of fundraising in that sure they're keeping the business going but fundraising is is about is about half of it yeah and it's it's just a, a tremendous burden uh for for the for the entrepreneur but you you don't need to you if you think about it that way i don't think you're going to be very successful in getting the fundraising you've got to be uh outgoing you've got to be aggressive for instance when i go to a pitch event if i if i meet with you Send me an email. You know, I get I give you my business card. Send you my send me an email afterwards. You know, a little thank you, and then I will respond to you and tell you either, uh, you know, gee, it was nice meeting you. Good luck. Or I often will re respond with a whole series of questions, and then that will enter into a discussion that uh, who knows where it can go. Yeah, and, and and on that advice, by the way, you know, take it a tiny bit further. It, many people will write that first email back, say, "Hey, am I getting investment?" Which is really what they're asking, mm -hmm. but. What about a month later or two months later or three months later, recognizing this is a campaign? So by continually looking for feedback, by continually giving advice, giving feedback on what's happening within your business, you're then building that relationship, right? And I think that's right. where a lot of entrepreneurs fail, Dan. They hear and know immediately. They go away. They never come back afterwards. 
And it's not that smart. Right. It, it, it is, as you said, it's about the relationships and, and, and making that relationship and letting, letting me help you. I, I, I myself am not going to help you more than, li- more than likely, but I know a lot of people that are going to be able to, if they can't help you, they'll know somebody that will be able to help you. Beautiful. And I feel like now we're, we're drilling into the final portion of the finals, like we're getting down to the last two people. But just before we get there, let's take a commercial break. And you tell me, how did you get into investment yourself? Like, what was it a year ago that made you think, I'm going to go into the crazy world of early stage investing and finding people with impossible dreams, with improbable timelines, who are coming to perfect strangers to ask them for a bunch of money to make it happen. Right. Well, you 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 make it you make it sound kind of desperate, <laughs> but uh, it's it's actually not not at all that way. I got into this. I was in the auto industry for 25 years. I was a corporate uh, type of person, and I. I I say that with a degree of shame. It was uh, I always admired the entrepreneurs and and the you know the guts and the brains and the leadership that were all kind of have to congeal together to make to make a business. Uh, but uh, so anyway, when I left the auto industry, I started actually working in uh, I started my own consultancy and did uh, market research for for the industry, which I had done within the industry for a lot of years. And then one of the people that I uh, I got a contact from somebody uh, who through a, a mutual uh, friend that said, uh, I'm actually starting an, ex- an automotive accelerator, and wow. I'm wondering if you would, you know, be able to donate some time to participate in that. At that point, coming from automotive development, I'll be honest with you, I, I had a rough idea what an accelerator was. Yeah. But at uh, any rate, I went and did that and, and started working with him. And then he, I said to him, how do you get these companies that, that are part of your accelerator? How do you find them? Then he tells me, well, I'm part of uh, a couple of different uh, angel groups and showed me the deal sheet. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, this is what I've been waiting for all my life. The ability to to sit and just look at all these different types of businesses, all of which uh, are in need of of starting funding. Uh, I said, I got to get into this. So. Long story short, I ended up uh, applying and, and working then with the Pasadena Angels. Fantastic. Isn't it so great? And it's so refreshing, isn't it? Just being in the early stage startup space. Like, oh, there's so much hope. There's so much hope. And, and there's so much, you know, young people that are so, uh, they're not jaded in any way. They're ready to give life a try. And uh, some of them are very sincere, very intelligent, uh, very, very hardworking. And it's just, it's great to be able, when you find these people with a, that do actually have a better mousetrap, that's that's the dream, is, and is to sh- work with them. Shall I tell you something even more beautiful than that? Kind of our journey here at the dojo. When I first started, I believed our, our demographic, our avatar of the perfect startup was a 22-year-old who, 22-year-old guy, let's be really specific, who's maybe based in Santa Monica or based somewhere around here where they've got access to some angels. Not an Ivy League person because those people were never going to come to us nor need us, but someone who came from a decent middle-class family who had the education and the ability to be fast start on entrepreneurship. Within... 12 months, we worked out that actually our perfect avatar is a 38 to a 44-year-old woman. Hmm. And, and, and this was just our second. And, and we realized that because, like, what is a perfect avatar for someone like us, right? We now have a small fund, which we invest in companies. We see early stage startups all the time. We have the pre-accelerator that goes with the fund, which is really just a training program, a connections program to get them going. Well, the only thing that really makes us look good is success, right? Yep. So if we get success and we get success quicker, then it's easy for us to attract more money to come in for the fund. It's easy for us to expand and to go further. So we're looking for the type of person who gets success quicker. And what would happen, and look, I'm generalizing, but I just, it was a fascinating process where at the beginning with the 22-year-old guy, many would come in and say, man, we're just going to build this. There's a huge need. We're going to blow it up. Mm -hmm. And that's all very nice, but not very specific. 
while the 38 to the 44 year old woman would come in and say, look, I've already been working on this for 12 months. There are seven aspects of this that would make it successful. Three of these aspects we've actually worked out and we're really good at these. I would like you to quantify for me how you're going to help me with these four other aspects and by when. Uh-huh. And I would think, this is friggin' awesome. That sounds because like a dream. she just saved me six months. Yeah. Like six months of work. I'm fluffing around on areas we didn't know about. Just being saved by this one conversation. But then, and that to me was so beautiful because I realized we're not dealing with the demographic because it's trendy or because it's nice or people should say we should work with women more. We're dealing with them because people haven't realized it's a friggin' awesome demographic for better success rates. And I'll tell you something even more beautiful that I've seen in the last six months. The last three investments that we got outside our fund, like 1 point, 1.5 million, have all been people between 45 and 55. Yeah, that's interesting. And there's one thing nicer than hope in a young person. It's when you get someone who's 45, 50, 55, 60, and they get a second lease of life. And they have something which they believe can change the earth and they feel 15 again. Right. And then you enable those people to get to that stage. Right. Right. And I see a lot of those entrepreneurs also getting through with Pasadena Angels as well. The entrepreneurs who are not quite, you know, 15, 16 year olds, they're a little bit older, but they're people who are really proven and they have a plan which has got, just got good probability for making it. Well, well, let me ask you, well, how do you see the coachability difference between the 22 year old and the 40 year old? I think it's night and day. The 40 really? year old is so easy to coach. Interesting. Yeah, those 40 year olds that come in, because you know what? I, listen, I'm 49. Life has has the ability to beat the crap out of you over a certain amount of years. That stuff that was important when I was 20 is not that important anymore. Right. And like, you know what? You can call me stuff now. I'm kind of okay with it because I've been called those things many, many times before. Right. And actually, after 20 odd years of marriage, if you call me that, it's probably one of the nicest things I've heard <laughs> this week. <laughs> so, yeah, I find, and especially the women, I find that women are really, really easy to coach. I find sometimes people who are a little bit younger and again no disrespect not generalizing just based on the companies that come through sometimes that they're so sure of what's right and wrong that it's hard to actually convince them otherwise until wrong actually comes and knocks on the door right. while with the older people yeah sometimes it's it's definitely easier so it, it's a beautiful thing you're right early stage startup we live it and breathe it every single day. And, and I, I look at the, the people like Pasadena Angels, Tech Coast Angels, like these wonderful, wonderful angel groups that are here in Southern California who have been here for many years before Santa Monica right. or Silicon Beach became trendy for early stage startup. And like what you've contributed to the local community and to early stage startups. And it's a great thing. Uh, you, you've joined a great organization. Well, thank you. I, 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 I couldn't be happier with with just the organization, the people I've met. They're all so friendly, and they're and they're and they're very intelligent people. And I thought one of the things I thought getting there, I thought, uh, you know, there's going to be some stuffed shirts here. I, 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 I got to be prepared for that. But I, if there is, I haven't met them. They're, they're just everyone's willing to. It, it's one of these things where you get together and the conversations just start flowing because everybody's interested in what everybody else is doing. Yeah, take me to the final. The final two. Ah, the final two. That is that is called uh, that is what we call the breakfast meeting, right. and uh, that is for the entire it. All, the entire angel group is invited to this. The entire angel group's invited to all of these, but uh, but they, they all want to come to this one. They all want to come to this one because it's uh, it's held at the Annandale Country Club, and breakfast is served. Yeah. So uh, that that gets the attendance uh, pretty good, and then at the finals, then we just have we're down to the final two for yeah. the for the month that are looking for funding they then uh, go each could do their pitch which is how long about 15 minutes i believe so they so this is big time pitch now this is pre- pretty big time pitch and yeah. and they've got about 10 minutes well actually five or 10 minutes of q a and then both groups then will uh, the, both of the presenters will go to opposite ends of this conference room that we have it's a large room and then the angels that are interested in investing in either one of those groups will then go to one of the one of the two locations and and basically start kind of a an informal uh, due diligence by by ans- asking some more you know pointed questions but only one is chosen right uh, no, no, uh, two, two are two are available for for funding. Okay, and, and, and then the angels themselves can individually decide to go after one or the other. 
Yes, and the Angels, if you want, if you, if you want to fund a, a, a company that you saw earlier but that didn't make it to the to the final two, if you want to do that ind- independent of that, you, you're free to do that too. That happens as well. Okay, and then the investment that's made into the actual startups themselves. Let's say, how does it normally work? Do, do normally, do they get 50-50 or how have you seen it over the last year or so? What do you mean 50-50? Well, you get the two startups, one goes to one side of the room, the oh. other gets to, I mean, look, this is the Super Bowl, right? So yes. you got the best of the best here. They're both obviously very good. I'd say there's probably a hair's breadth between both of them as far as will they make it or won't they make it? Yes, you're you're right. At least that's kind of the way I see it. But usually when it when it's splits into two there you know a fair majority will go to one versus the other and uh, exactly why that is I don't know it could have to do with the you know with, <laughs> with the topic that's being discussed a lot of times you you get some very sophisticated biotech type yeah. startups that will will come in and they I, I'm very interested in them they they can do so many fantastic things these days however you've got the FDA and so many other things that a lot of investors uh, even those that have worked <laughs> in pharma in the yeah they're before, afraid because they it's, just yeah yeah too, too many landmines too many trapdoors it's a skill set but that must be a nervy moment at the end when you're a startup on one end and you're a startup at the other end and you're thinking please please walk to me oh, please don't leave me as the only one with nobody yeah I, I'm sure it is, uh, but uh, it, it doesn't seem like it's quite that competitive. And and basically, if you've made it to the final two, you're you're available for funding. You're there. You're yep. pretty much there anyway. Yep. And 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 I think Mike has made one point repeatedly throughout this talk today, which is this is not just once you get through the door of Pasadena Angels. What's happened is you have just become visible to 130 high-level accredited angel investors. And anything can happen from there, from an individual angel getting involved with you to the point that you made earlier about getting into an accelerator for the car uh, the car accelerator, the automotive right. accelerator before. It's all about putting yourself out there. So the only thing that surprises me is that there are not more applications because that's a pretty they're pretty good odds. You know, 50 applications coming in, one or two making it through to the final breakfast. Well, I'll take those any day of the week. Yeah, well, if you, what is that, about 4% chance of, yeah. of getting through? Yeah, that's you're right. That's the way you've got to think about it is those are actually pretty good odds. Yeah, that's a better chance than I have of getting a hot dinner when I go home these days. I'm telling you, I'll, I'll, take, a four, <laughs> I'll take a 4% chance any day. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's all a matter of what, you, you know, what you're wanting to do. And remember, if, you, if you've gone... To the final two. Say you made it to the final four, you didn't make it to the final two. It's still, you, you've you had a lot of exposure to a lot of people yeah. that uh, you never know when that could be to your benefit. I love it. Hey, look, can we finish? I know we talked beforehand and I told you all these things we were going to talk about. And then this just became so fascinating. I couldn't stay off this topic. But I think everybody listening to this has such a great insight now into how one of the top angel groups in the country actually looks and processes through applications and almost more importantly what they should do as startups to prepare themselves properly to do this and I just I want to before leaving Mike with the last word on on his advice to startups on what he's seen over the last year or so and actually through his life on the difference between a great startup that have a phenomenal probability of being successful and maybe a startup that isn't so great and how you can position yourself in the great space. I just want to really, really make this one point to all of you. When you are starting your fundraising process and you are putting yourself in front of these groups, please, please take it extremely seriously. And I mean every part of it. I know as startups, you're busy. I know you've got a lot to do. I know you're trying to juggle, you know, your personnel, your staff, your business, your processes, your outreach, which your institutional investing. But when you're in front of a group of 130 of the most influential angels in an entire region, I promise you, no matter what you do after that, a conversation will end up being had with one of these people at one stage over the next eight or nine months. Make sure that you put so much effort into it that that conversation with those people is going to be all about you being as incredible as you could have possibly been all the way through the process. Mike, take us home. Give us a little bit of advice that you would give to entrepreneurs about being great. And then also just maybe how people can contact you, even if it's through me, that's okay as well. 
Yeah, the uh, I I would say the the advice to the to the to the people coming to the angel groups to to coming to the Pasadena Angels specifically is come come with uh, come with a lot of uh, professional enthusiasm. I guess I should say what is imp- what I've learned going through this is how much the personality of the leader and the lead of, and the personality of the team makes makes a difference as you as you go through it. Yeah, you've got a better mousetrap, but <clears throat> that's not so uncommon these days. It's how you're going to market. It's how you're going to finance it. It's, how, it's the enthusiasm you're going to do it with that, that is going to really determine whether or not you get the funding. And uh, just uh, keep, keep also keep going with the uh, communications and things like that. As, as you were just saying, that just because... We shake hands maybe at the final four and say, we'll see, you know, thank you for playing. It doesn't mean that we're done. And it, it, you should not think that way. And it's up to you to kind of keep us informed as to when you think you're ready to to come back and have another shot at it. I love it. And how can people contact you or contact Pasadena Angels? Well, Pasadena Angels is very easy. You just uh, There's a website. And through the website, you can actually apply for funding. And uh, the, all the directions are there in the website. And then if you want to contact me, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Mike Krebs. And it's very easy. Just uh, send me an email at krebsplace at hotmail.com. Be, Beautiful. Be happy to talk with you. I thank you, sir, for getting involved in the early stage startup community. Um, I thank all the folks in Pasadena Angels, as I always do. Uh, it's a pleasure. You've shared some phenomenal information. Thanks for being a part of it. Well, thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. And uh, we definitely enjoy working with the, the expert dojo. Thank you. That's a wrap. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you know any other entrepreneur equally ambitious as you, then share this podcast by paying it forward to other entrepreneurs who are building your own army. Now, as always, our website, expertdojo.com, is packed with information to help you grow your business, find investment, and train for victory. We also walk our talk and invest in startups every year in our accelerator here in Silicon Beach. You can always reach out to me at brian at expertdojo.com and I look forward to being back here again at our regular time next Tuesday, 10 a.m. with another of the world's top investors helping you win the war against startup failure.